Welcome to worship with the churches of Cowie, Clean and Bannockburn Allen. Welcome to friends from the congregations and communities of Cowie, Clean and Bannockburn. And welcome to friends from other places who are joining us for these services. We've just been listening to an arrangement of The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, which has kindly been made available by Rod Smith on his YouTube channel, Worship and Praise, Traditional Hymns and Songs. In the church year, we are currently in the season of Easter, which started on Easter Sunday and which runs for seven Sundays until the Sunday after the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, so after today we have three more to go in this season. And during this time, we're thinking about how the Bible passages show us something of what Jesus did when he was here on earth, and also show us what the risen Jesus does by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're also thinking about how the old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, connects with what the Bible passages are showing us. In today's reading from John's Gospel, which we will hear in a few minutes, Jesus likens himself to a good shepherd. That is why we listened earlier to Rod Smith playing The King of Love My Shepherd Is. A shepherd in Bible times travelled with his sheep, looking for safe places to graze, to drink and to sleep. As the season wore on and green pasture became scarcer, shepherd and sheep had to travel much further afield. Sometimes the going was tough, scary and dangerous. How has your journey been this week? What kind of landscape have you been travelling through? Let's pray. Loving God, Shepherd of the flock, for some of us this past week has been quite good. But for others of us, it has been really painful. Perhaps we are struggling with our health or our emotional health. Perhaps things are really getting to us, overwhelming us even, and it's hard to just keep going. Perhaps we are worried or sad for someone we love. Loving God, shepherd of the flock, we know that you're with us, but some days it's hard to believe that. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Help us, Lord, beside the still waters of this time of worship. Help us to pause, to rest, to bring to you our troubles, and to know that you do indeed restore our souls. to know that you do indeed restore our inner strength and enable us to carry on. And so in this stillness, beside these still waters, let us hold our lives open to God. Lord God of all life, we pause, we rest beside these still waters, and we lay our troubles and our concerns before you.
We ask you, Lord, to restore our souls, to renew our strength, to carry on. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, we read, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Restore our souls, O Lord, we pray. Renew our strength. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Our reading from the Bible this morning is read by Phil Jordan. Phil is an elder at Bannockburn Allen Church and is also one of their squad of garden gnomes who do a power of work in the church grounds and church buildings. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. The shepherd and his flock. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is a shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. In the verses from John's Gospel, which Phil has just read for us, Jesus is speaking about sheep and about the sheepfolds in which sheep are spending the night. But he's speaking about two different kinds of sheepfolds. The first kind he's talking about is a fairly substantial stone-built sheepfold with a proper door and a doorkeeper. The second kind is a much less substantial construction made of branches and sticks. We have in the first few verses of the reading the picture of the shepherd entering the sheepfold by the door and the thief going in some other way. This is a type of sheepfold that they would have in a village or town and this would be a communal sheepfold. Different shepherds would bring their sheep there at night There would be security on the door, the doorkeeper. He knew who was who, and if you were a recognised shepherd who used that fold, he let you in. If you were not recognised, he didn't let you in. The shepherd is known to the doorkeeper, and he lets him in, 
and his sheep know his voice, and they follow him. When he's brought them out, he goes ahead, and his sheep follows. And conversely, if somebody was not genuine, he tried to sneak in another way. So Jesus said the shepherd would turn up at the door, but if somebody came in another way, they were a thief and a robber. This whole image speaks about trust in the shepherd. The shepherd knowing the sheep, the doorkeeper knowing the shepherd, and the sheep knowing the voice of the shepherd who cares for them. Well, this is lovely and very nice, but what does this image, this picture, from the Middle East in the first century have to say to us in the 21st century in our own situation? Well, let's remind ourselves of what we've been noticing over recent weeks in this season of Easter. The Gospels were written to tell us what Jesus did and to tell us what Jesus does. The Jesus we read about in the Gospels did and said those things long ago, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, he still does these things today, and his followers, his sheep, still know his voice today. We all know what it is to be conflicted inside ourselves, tossed about with different thoughts and feelings, pulling us this way, then pulling us that way. Sometimes we describe the different thoughts and feelings as being like voices, not out loud audible voices, but voices like the voice of conscience or the call of duty or a nagging voice that's worrying us. We often talk about voices as a way of speaking about our own inner experience. For example, we can find ourselves saying, this is what I have to get done, difficult though it is. But we also, in the same situation, find ourselves wondering, am I just being too hard on myself, asking too much of myself? Or in another set of circumstances, we might find ourselves brooding over a conversation with somebody that we had, and it was a difficult conversation. We find ourselves asking, should I not have said that to him? But we're also wondering, am I just being too sensitive? Which one is correct? How do we begin to untangle the swirling thoughts and feelings? Well, you know how you sometimes need to tidy a drawer or a cupboard or a shelf. You know how it is much easier if you take everything out and lay it on the table or worktop or even the floor. Then you sort it out. Do I still need that? Should these things go together? And so on. Then you start to put them back in some sort of order. Well, with our tangled thoughts and feelings, it's good to do the same. Good to unpack them and lay them out and see all the different strands that are going on inside us. So part of me thinks I was too harsh when I said that. But another part of me thinks it needed to be said. Part of me worries if I've damaged our friendship or relationship. And another part of me knows we have to be honest with each other. Do you recognise that experience of a whole jumble? We need to find ways to get these jumbled thoughts out of the cupboard or drawer, onto the table or wherever, and start sorting them into order. We need to find ways to get the tangle out of our heads and hearts. Last week we reminded ourselves that in the book of Psalms, the writer of each of the Psalms often began by telling it like it was. We can do this too. So we can say, So Lord, it had to be said. I had to say it. It was building up and I needed to tell him how it was affecting me. And when we're saying that bit, we don't hold back on how frustrated or annoyed we were feeling. We're true to these feelings. And once we've done justice to that, we can say, Lord, shine your light on this situation. Show me the way forward. Then we can look at another strand that's going through our mind. We can also say, well, Lord, I am worried. 
in case I was a bit too harsh, especially when I said the bit about such and such. And once again, once we've done justice to that feeling, we can say, Lord, shine your light on this situation. Show me the way forward. And we can continue. And Lord, I'm worried in case I've spoiled our friendship because it means a lot to me. We've been good friends now for a long time. And again, Lord, shine your light on this situation. Show me the way forward. But Lord, being honest with each other is important. Lord, shine your light on this situation. Show me the way forward. Now the key is to give time for each voice to be brought out and laid out on the table. Give time and respect to each of the different voices. Some people find it can be particularly helpful to write this down. Some people keep a notebook for this very purpose and call it a journal. But notice what we're also doing. As we tease out and lay out the different voices on the table, we're also asking God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to be involved with us in helping us sort and sift through them. And we do know what it feels like when we've been worried about something and we've talked it over with someone or written it down or prayed about it, when things start to shift into place. There's a shift inside us. Sometimes this happens quite quickly. Other times we have to spend several days or more praying through some decision. There are some drawers you can sort through in five minutes. There are other sorting exercises that take a bit longer. Sometimes we'll get a clear sense of peace quickly. Other times we need to stick with this. But in this process, we are prayerfully sifting through all the voices and also listening for the voice of peace from the shepherd whose voice we know, the shepherd who leads us. So in these first verses of John chapter 10, Jesus was speaking about the communal sheepfolds and his sheep hearing and recognising his voice. But then in verse 7, the picture changes. Jesus talks about him being the door of the sheep. What on earth does he mean when he says he's the door? He's now talking about the kind of sheepfold used out on the hillside. They were just open spaces enclosed by a wall or a fence. They had no door of any kind, just an opening through which the sheep came in. At night, the shepherd himself lay down across the opening. No sheep could get out without disturbing him, and nobody could get in without passing over his body. The shepherd was very much on the ground with his sheep. He was quite literally the door. As the sheep entered the fold each night, the shepherd would hold his rod across the entrance, quite close to the ground. The sheep would have to pass under it, and as they did so, the shepherd quickly examined it to see if it had received any kind of injury during the day. So when Jesus speaks of himself as the door in verse 7, the picture he is offering is of care for his sheep. And there's a lovely thought here that at the end of the day, as we hand the day over to God and as we lie down to sleep, he checks out if we are all right or if we have received any knocks and bruises. There's a simple way of praying which fits very well with the picture of the shepherd checking that each sheep is all right. Towards the close of the day, we can take a moment. We can think of that picture of the good and kind shepherd caring for us, his sheep, who might be a bit bruised by the day. And we can ask God to help us look back over the day. We can think of what we were doing. What was good? What made us feel peaceful, content, fulfilled, positive, encouraged, any of these things? 
And as we think on something, we can pause and savour it and give thanks to God for this. Then we can also think if there was something in the day which troubled us. And if there was, we can hold this open to God, to his healing light and love. Or maybe as we think on the day in this prayerful way, we're drawing to say sorry, to ask forgiveness, or ask for help for tomorrow, that things may be different, or ask God for strength to get through what lies ahead, or ask for, or, or whatever prayer is arising naturally in our heart. We are inviting the Good Shepherd to care for us, to lead us, and to guide us. You might also be interested to know that this type of prayer was practised several times a day by the Spanish Christian Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius, Ignatius called this prayer the examen. When the shepherd had a quick look to see if the sheep had any injuries, he was making time to sort something out before it got infected and became a problem. And that's what this prayer can do for us too. And it also fits in with our theme for these Sundays in the Easter season, what a friend we have in Jesus. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I had a phone call from Gerald Anderson, session clerk of Cowie and Pleen. Gerald had been looking through some old church magazines from a few years back and he came across a poem which had been put in by an anonymous contributor. Gerald thought it might well say something to us today. I agree with Gerald and I'm going to read it now. At times I am so discouraged by the problems of the day. I fail to see the joyful things that are along the way and troubles overwhelm me it's then my nerves will fray. That's when I need to take the time to simply sit and pray. Reflecting on God's many gifts, it makes me so aware of all the joys and little things around me everywhere. I must try to remember when problems come my way, not to miss the joyful things, the beauty of the day. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Good Shepherd, thank you for this picture you gave us in John's Gospel. Thank you that we really can pray to you as the day begins and as it ends and at any time between. Lord, as the poem says, sometimes we are discouraged by the problems of the day and we fail to see the joyful things along the way. Some things, Lord, troubles do overwhelm us, and our nerves do indeed fray. Help us, Lord, to take the time, to make the time, to sit and pray, and to reflect upon your many gifts around us everywhere. So, Good Shepherd, help us in this moment to be still, and to know that you are God, and that you are with us. And Lord, we pray for those who are struggling, those who might be travelling through some difficult, dark and lonely stage of their journey. We pray for them now. And Lord, we ask you to show us how we can reach out to them. Lord, hear our prayers. And now three short prayers in the Celtic Christian tradition from Ray Simpson's book, Celtic Prayers for Today. May the blessing of the earth be on you, that you may be rooted in God. And may the blessing of the rain be on you, that you may never dry up. May the blessing of the wind be upon you, that you may be blown God's way forever. May we be a hand to the weak, 
an anchor in the storm, and a light in the dark. May the Christ who walks with wounded feet walk with us on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out our hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with the wounded heart open our hearts to love. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear all our prayers. We offer them in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship with the churches of Cowie, Pleen and Bannockburn Allen will be back next weekend. Until then, my friends, have as good a week as you can in the circumstances. And now may God's peace, God's love and God's strength be with each one of you and with all those whom you love, today, tomorrow and every tomorrow, forevermore. Amen. Amen.